you remember a couple weeks ago, there was a bunch of articles spreading throughout the PC tech journalist space stating a Reddit user had found an RTX 2080 prototype on eBay and that it was fully functional. What would you say if I managed to pick up one of those 10 RTX 2080 prototypes off of eBay? That's right, everyone. I have the RTX 2080 prototype in my hands, also known as the GTX 2080. So in today's video, we're gonna have a look at this bad boy here. We're gonna try and game on it. We're gonna try and see if ray tracing works on it. Overall, I'm just super excited to try out this prototype graphics card and to try and make it work on Windows and just see what it's got and why Nvidia decided to go with RTX instead of GTX on the side. Before we put this bad boy on my test bench, we are gonna take a closer look at the RTX 2080, I mean the GTX 2080. There is no branding where it normally would say RTX 2080 on it. But if we flip the card up on its end, as you can see, it does in fact say GeForce GTX on the top of the card, which is really cool in my opinion. But we also have an eight pin and a six pin power connector. My uh, PCIe bracket unfortunately got pretty banged up in transit as you can see. Uh, hopefully everything is a-okay with my card because uh, that is that looks like it took quite the tumble uh, <laughs> There's also a sticker on the inside of the graphics cards PCIe slot that says config number six I don't know what that means I don't know if this is the sixth graphics card out of the ten that was part of that eBay lot If we look at the rear IO of this graphics card so you can see that we have a display port an HDMI a display port another a display port and a USB-C port. So that would fall in line with the RTX 2080's rear IO, especially that USB-C port, which was removed later in the 3000 series. If we also take a look at the end of the card here, you can see that there is a barcode on there that says GTX 1C1824004444. If we flip it over to the back side of the card, there is another sticker. It's very, very, very tiny uh, on there. Hopefully the camera can pick it up but it says 6991G1800000100G1. G1. That's probably the uh, die name is my guess. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this bad boy on my test bench and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get the drivers to work for this card. The fan spun up, so that is a good thing. The GTX logo on the top is actually glowing green and we do have a post and it looks like we are booting into Windows now. So this is a super awesome sign to see that, that my card wasn't dead on arrival and that it actually is booting into Windows, which is super cool. So after a bit of head scratching and trying to figure things out, I finally got the GTX 2080 to install drivers. I ended up having to modify the drivers, which causes a few issues. By modifying this driver, I had to disable the driver signature enforcement on Windows, which means that I can no longer play any online games such as uh, Apex Legends, Warzone, Overwatch, Valorant, because all of those games require you to have driver signature enforcement on. By me modifying this driver, it is no longer signed, which means that it's no longer a trusted driver for Windows, and uh, I have to disable the driver signature enforcement in order for this driver to work. So I hope that made sense. Now that we finally got a working driver on the computer with the GTX 2080, I'm now going to open up Tech Power Up GPU-Z just to see what kind of information that the graphics card is reporting. And this is kind of interesting because GPU-Z does not know what this graphics card is whatsoever. So I think what's happening is my graphics card has a different vBIOS version than the one that was posted on Reddit. And for some reason, I'm not able to install the official driver. And by me modifying it, I guess it's kind of messing up with uh, what GPU-Z is doing here, but pretty much everything is listed here correctly, like CUDA, OpenCL, Vulkan, Ray Tracing, Physics, and so on and so forth. Everything is reporting correctly, but it doesn't know what die size it is or what nanometer process, the release date or the transistor count. So that is a bit weird and DirectX support is unknown as well, but I can guarantee you that DirectX is definitely supported on this graphics card. So that's a little bit interesting to see what GPU-Z is doing here. It seems rather confused at the moment, but uh, anyways, we're going to start running some games here. And one that I'm really curious to find out whether or not if it runs or not is going to be Battlefield 5. So let's see if I get banned on Origin with <laughs> the GTX 2080. Actually, we're loading in. Holy crap, is this actually going to work? No way. No way this is going to work. There's no friggin' way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm not gonna hold my breath just yet because I don't know if I'm gonna get banned, but 
it seems to be working. Okay, well, I'm loaded in. <laughs> um, it seems like the bottleneck is definitely the uh, the 3770K, because we're at 100% of the 3770K and the GTX 2080 is only at 50%, but it, it actually is running Battlefield 5, so that's really, really cool to see that it's actually working. And I'm actually re really surprised that I haven't been banned yet by using a modified driver on Battlefield 5. Unfortunately, other games I don't think are gonna work because uh, their anti-cheat is more up to date, and this is a modified driver. So, uh, but Battlefield 5 works, really cool. So with Battlefield 5 out of the way, we're gonna try Cyberpunk 2077. And the reason why we're going with Cyberpunk 2077 is because the Reddit user that originally found these graphics cards, uh, the GTX 2080 prototype, says that DLSS and ray tracing actually do indeed work on these cards, and I'm really curious to see if they actually do work. So we're gonna go into the settings here. I'm running at 1440p. Uh, I'm going to set the texture quality down to medium. We're gonna apply, uh, actually apparently it's just stuck at uh, high. <laughs> so maybe if we go with the medium preset here, DLSS uh, can be turned on, that's awesome. So we're gonna send that to performance because we are running a 3770K. Uh, we're gonna turn motion blur right off because I hate motion blur. And ray tracing, we're gonna turn ray tracing on and we're gonna just turn it all on and we're just gonna leave it at medium. Hit the apply button and it, it does indeed look like ray tracing is actually working. Look at that, that's really cool. That's awesome. And it looks like DLSS is working as well. So let's like back out of it here, go to settings again. And for some reason it keeps defaulting me back to the high textures for some reason. I can't seem to change that. But we're gonna turn ray tracing off. We're gonna turn DLSS to like ultra performance, for example, and turn this down. Hit apply, back out. And yeah, look at that. It actually does look like it's working because this res uh, reflection here was looking much better with ray tracing on and my FPS is shot up to about 70. Look at that, that's really cool. Another game that I wanted to test to see if DLSS is actually working is going to be Horizon Zero Dawn. So I'm gonna go into the settings here and go to display, NVIDIA DLSS, and we can choose our uh, upscale quality method. So I have it on balance at the moment, but I'm gonna try performance and see what happens. Running at 1440p, uh, graphics is all set to high. I turn motion blur off because they hate it. Um, but if we go into the game, look, I am running at <laughs> like 100 plus FPS on 1440p on an old 3770K. That's really cool. And everything seems to be running very, very well. So we're at like 116 right now. If I go to settings and I go to um, display, I'm gonna turn DLSS off and see what happens just to see how much our FPS drops. So it dropped down to 84. We were at like 115 and we dropped down to 84. That's insane. So we are now in 3D Mark. We're gonna have a look at the benchmarking results for Time Spy, Port Royal, and Fire Strike. So I'm gonna load in the results here. For Fire Strike, we got a graphic score of 24,668, an overall score of 13,246, a physics score of 6,942, a combined score of 4,259. So the 3770K is definitely affecting the results for Fire Strike. Uh, probably the one you wanna pay attention to is the graphic score of 24,668. These results are probably not up to snuff of what the uh, GTX 2080 can do, but that is unfortunately the only test bench that I have right now is the 3770K on DDR3 RAM, so it's definitely holding it back for the performance on this card, but it's kind of cool to see the results anyway, just to see what the thing's got with such old hardware. But we're gonna load in the Port Royal score here, so let's have a look at what our graphics score is for the Port Royal benchmark on the GTX 2080 and the graphics score is 6,622. 6, so I think that's around where an RTX 2080 should be. So that seems to be correct, I think. It probably could do a little bit better with uh, a better CPU. So for Time Spy, we got a graphics score of 10,564, an overall score of 7,194, and an absolutely abysmal CPU score these days of 2,563. So this is definitely being bogged down again by the 3770K. But those are all the tests that I did in 3D Mark. Again, they're probably not really relevant to the power that can be output from the GTX 2080 prototype, but it's still interesting to see regardless. So that is gonna wrap up today's video, everyone, on the GTX 2080 prototype. It can indeed do everything that the Reddit user stated 
Uh, unfortunately, I can't play online games with mine because I cannot get a driver to work, but uh, we'll work on getting that fixed and remedied for the next video on this graphics card. I'm not really done with this graphics card because I really want to know what it can do with a better computer. So I tried this graphics card on Optiflex, which is my modified Dell Optiflex 7, uh, 7070 with an i9. Uh, it just output a black screen, so it would not boot on a pre-built Dell Optiplex that's modified. Um, so I'm going to have to end up trying to put this into probably my main rig, which is Colossus with a Threadripper uh, 2950X with 64 gigs of RAM and such. So we're going to try and run it on that and see how that goes and see if we can actually get some good benchmarks out of the GTX 2080 prototype because definitely the 3770K is slowing it down. So I'm not going to include any benchmarks because they're really not relevant. I just really wanted to see what this graphics card was capable of doing like DLSS, CUDA, ray tracing and so forth. But anyways, that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the GTX 2080 prototype. As always, my name is Kendall, so known as Wiltshire, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.